Okay, what classes did he have? He's got Mage, Priest, Paladin, he banned my Warrior? Oh <laughs> sweet, that's the class I was scared. I didn't think I was going to be able to get the Warrior out. So now the question is if I can get the Warlock out. So you, generally speaking, if you're just going from a raw stats perspective, you want to play the, the deck you have the least win rate with, so you can have the most amount of tries with it. So theoretically, if this is Freeze Mage, Control Priest, and uh, Control Paladin, my lowest win rate deck against those is going to be the Warlock. So I want to queue Warlock first, so I have the maximum amount of tries to get Warlock out. So we're going to queue Warlock first, and uh, hopefully get the Warlock out nice and easy. And then if that gets out, I feel like we're going to win the tournament. Delay, I'm assuming? Not yet. I don't know. I'd have to stop the stream to start delay, so I was like, screw it. We're just YOLOing it. Alright, so this isn't that bad of a matchup. Like, it looks like a terrible matchup, but... Because we're Zoo, right? But we have piloted Shredders and Hazard Shake and weird shit. So it'll be fine. Dark Bomb can be okay to snipe like a Northshire Cleric or something that can be annoying, but I would rather find minions to do that, like Knife Juggler, Flame Imp sort of stuff. Cancer Gnome. Cancer Gnome plus PO is not the worst. Just get that quick early clear. If he goes like Cleric, Coin, Power Word, Shield, probably just have to kill it and then throw out the Imp Gang boss. Is someone injured? Who just does this? We just Dark Bomb it. Oh yeah, that's a curve. That's a curve. Is this a tourney? Yeah, man, this is a tournament. This is one of the open tournaments to just try and get BlizzCon points, so... Tuesday night hype. Death does not scare me. Trade or not to trade? Probably don't trade. Like, if he buffs it or whatever, this trade's still gonna be the same. It has one health. If they had, like... Three health may be worth trading to try and play around chosen a little bit. Death Lord's such a problem card. <laughs> it's not a big deal. We can plow through this turn, but I don't want to lose the shredder. We could probably just get through it since he didn't chosen. It's that turn. It's likely he doesn't have chosen. He drew two cards. His odds of finding it are kind of decent, but not great. Do you have the artifact? That's fine, now he can get through it. Killed off the Imp Gang boss too, which is actually pretty good because Cabal's coming up soon, right? You don't want that guy alive for that. So we can use PO to get through. Dump my hand in Soulfire if I want. Yeah, I just clear the board here, right? So this goes here. And then Shredder goes in and Soulfire goes in. And then, uh... Never get as a trick. Goes there. Full board against Priest. So yeah, we didn't, he had a good early curve, but we'll be alright. Shredder can trade into there cleanly, but that doesn't play around any of the AoEs very good. Oh, okay. Let's get the tempo soul fire off and push bears. Let me change your mind. Mm, trade's fine, so we're okay with it. Trade first before Ezra Drake. Hit the juggle, we got this trade and then coil. 50 50. Got him. We're gonna push face. Next turn, we should be finding burn guaranteed. We have lethal on the table if he doesn't clear. So, I mean, this deck is really good alternative to Zoo because against the control lineups like his lineup, which was targeting Zoo and things like that, as it has like Priest and Mage and Warrior, right? It's so good against the control deck still because you have this sort of hybrid approach to it, which gives you the chance to win against those decks as well. And it also still does very good against Druid in those. So, it's like one of my favorite decks in the Conquest format because of just how versatile it is and how good it is against all the different sorts of lineups they can try and target you. Because as Zoo's gained in popularity, a lot of people have been bringing lineups to try and target Zoo. And this just defies that strategy. <laughs> you just can't do that against this one. Because there aren't four decks in the format that can target this deck. And it's a Warlock deck that's unexpected. So it's pretty cool with the band formats. Anyway, that was the hardest one probably to get out. The Rogue's going to get a guaranteed win against the Priest. The Druid's going to get a guaranteed win against the Priest. This guy's dead. Yeah. It's probably not going to be mage. But if it is mage, it's a risk I'm taking. I feel like Druid's still fine against the other decks in his lineup, so I'll be happy with it. The 
Yeah. I will fight. They always Honor. too scared. Fan's not bad against Paladin. I mean, his curve, if he's anything, Paladin is actually pretty good. No removal is pretty sketchy though. I don't know if you want to even keep piloted Shredder. I have to mulligan as if he's secret Paladin because that's like the more pressing concern, right? So I need to get the early game cards to deal with that deck, just because otherwise I'll get aggroed out of the game too fast. So I gotta throw everything back, try and find defensive options. Double sprint is not defensive options. <laughs> oh, he may be dead. If he's anything though, this hand's pretty good. Uh oh. Looks like he's probably secret Paladin. If he's mid-range Paladin, this hand might be too slow. Like, there aren't many rogue hands that are too slow to deal with mid-range Paladin, but this might be one of them. Well, you know, we could pick up a sprint or something, and then we're right back in the game. I mean, not sprint. We have enough of those. <laughs> a prep or something. Hmm, double mini bot. Look at you. What a champion. Well, next turn I want to be playing Violet Teacher, so I guess I'll just get the Deadly Dagger up, so... We can drop Violet Teacher and maybe threaten to kill... Whatever 3-drop he play, plays. Can't really deal with Muster like that, but... If he went Coin Minibot into Minibot into Muster, then obviously we're screwed. No question about that. Not duty. so bad. I don't think there's any sense swinging. If he, like, kings and trades up, we're just gonna sap anyway, so... We shouldn't swing at it. If he kings this one and trades up, we can hit with the dagger, play Belcher, so... We have outs for either line of using kings there, you know? True Silver. True Silver leans more towards mid-range Paladin than it does towards uh, Secret Paladin. A lot of people have not been playing True Silver Champion in their Secret Paladin, favoring Foghammer instead. Makes more sense with his lineup for this to be mid-range paladin, so I'm gonna expect him to be mid-range paladin, you know? Even still. Even though mid-range paladin is such like a random, uncommon thing for people to play. So... Put this apple on your head. Knife juggler. All the cards could be in both still. Not on my watch. Alright, that's an aggro paladin card. <laughs> what? Oh, I'm confused. I'm confused and need a blade flurry. That's all I know. Alright, so we want to sap something, right? So we go face test for double sacrifice first, swing at something, sap the thing it buffs. Well, I want to go here though, right? Just in case the bubble gets hit. Kill the juggler. I don't really want to sap mini bot though. It's gotta be Avenge, right? So many How much do I want to gamble on that? Alright, we'll swing here. It wasn't Avenge. Interesting. So we're gonna swing here, sap the juggler. Swing here, sap the juggler. Yeah, this is better against redemption things later on in the game, so we do it that way. We have to kill him soon. We have no heals in the deck, and we have no more taunts, because we've used our one Belcher, so... The game's coming to a close one way or the other pretty soon. So even though we're at 16, it's like... Yeah, the game's almost over. If we get a Flurry, though, it'd be insane. Then we could just go all face, set up to Flurry. Probably fine, his deck doesn't have too much... I don't know what he's playing. I don't know what he's playing anymore. <laughs> I was gonna say, his deck probably doesn't have too much burst. Then that happened. So... Aggro Paladin with Bomb Lobbers is the deck. The deck of choice here. And we get a 1 2 off of it, which is not good for us. We haven't used any preps yet. We could try and hit like a prep flurry off of this later on. How much damage do we have? If we dagger deadly, that's 3 6. So many options. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 damage. That's not even like enough. Now we can start accumulating enough. Probably gonna have to find the other flurry though at this point. Like we need a flurry to clear his board and then the second flurry will be able to setting up lethal. Doing that is kinda awkward. 
I don't understand. Cool, didn't buff him. Finley almost got the synergy there. Flurry will be able to wipe this board very easily though. So now we have 12, 16 damage, he's at 17 life. We need two turns to do it all. We have a sprint to try and find the last bit of damage too. Two preps in the deck, so we'll likely hit prep plus a damage spell. Assuming we can set up a situation where we're not dead. Might be hard. <laughs> That's some, some effective damage from Paladin as far as damage out of hand goes. That's about as good as it gets. Three, four, five. Even if we take care of juggler. Oh, that's a good card. That's a good card. We do that first. We gotta be setting up lethal soon though, because like we can't take the onslaught of this much longer. We don't have flurry. We can try and find flurry. Getting this BGH down has to be the play, right? We try and oil it and find flurry next turn. I don't wanna sap. How do I win if I don't sap? I've got the beast in my I don't know. He's got to have nothing, right? Two damage a turn. He's probably going to kill the BGH, which might buy us some more time. If that buys us an extra turn, we get a shot. If he just drops something big like Tyrion and we get a sap off on us, it gives us another turn. We just need to find one more turn somewhere, somehow. That might do it. <laughs> As far as random big ass minions he could play that do nothing. That's uh that's one of them. Good stuff. Alright, one damage off lethal still over two turns. That should do it. I'm ready to I think Violet Teacher is better than establishing the oil that turn, because I want to get the oil buff on one of these to help me trade into the uh the guy when he plays it again. If we get Flurry, we want to be swinging to set up lethal in case he had quality consecrates, then we top deck Flurry. If I want to sprint though, I don't want to Flurry. I'm torn. I'll hold. I think it's better to hold most of the time there. Probably. So, can we kill our opponent? Three, four, five, six. Should be dead, right? I'm ready to learn. I'm ready to learn. To whiff? That's not good. It's nine, ten, eleven. We got one more draw to try and make it happen, otherwise we lose. And I guess it doesn't really matter. I just pop this though. I am ready to And we're dead. Instruction here we go. I give up. If you don't play the violet teacher, you're one damage off standing up that way anyway. So we needed a top tech regardless which way we went. Question is, is one Thalnos draw better than going for the sprint, you know? That's really the only thing. Well, now he's got freeze mage. Well, he's got some sort of mage. And uh, the priest still. So I think I'll probably just still queue rogue, try and hit the priest again. I had two preps in the deck, but I still had 13 cards remaining in the deck. So there's like a lot of cards. Had to poison for the combo. I could use backstab to combo, or I could use poison for the combo. Either way, it doesn't change anything. The light shall bring victory. Watch your back. I don't know what kind of priest deck this guy's playing, but it's probably pretty wonky. I like deadly SI. It gives me the ability to just instantly kill something out of hand. Usually, you win this game if you find one of your sprints. Do I have two of his decks? No, I only had one of this left in the deck. I don't want to play Thalnos and let him farm cards, that sounds bad. It's probably just dagger pass. Death does not scare me. Not good, man. 
Alright, set up to get through the Death Lord with the <laughs> Alnos Eviscerate. So, you can go here, heal it, and then there, I guess, would ruin that. Shadow Word Pain, what? Who plays this card? We're gonna lose to Priest. Sketchy stuff, man. Well, now I can't Shadow Word Pain my t-shirt. So that's guaranteed to get at least a little bit of value on the board. Unless he has the second Shadow Word Pain. Don't pain me, bro. Do you have the artifact? Ah, red will be okay. We can get through the Death Lord this turn too. Get rid of this cleric so he can't farm infinite draws. I'm scared of the draws that he can get. Ooh. That's pretty good. Not good enough, but it's pretty good. Probably do it soon, but first I wanna just punch through this. I'm ready to learn. Here we go. I'm ready to learn. Instruction begins. And I don't want him to farm infinite cards, so I gotta get rid of the cleric. Squeezing out his card draw is really important, because like eventually it becomes like a value game towards the end, you know? This is a good spot to be. The damned stand ready. And we got the flurry next turn with spell power. That's gonna kill everything. Four damage across the board. Hopefully something to develop with it. Nothing to develop with it. It's still worth doing. Next turn, Azure Drake Sap on whatever he plays is pretty good. Could cycle the fan, but then I can't redagger, so I'd rather redagger. Sometimes you can run out of damage in this matchup, so I feel good with my hand being low, just poking him a little bit, getting in those extra free damages. Wasn't Firebat on Tempo Storm? No, I wasn't on Tempo Storm. I just played a tournament with them and uh, for the Red Bull Team Brawl. And uh, that was it, one tournament. Is it worth it to play Azure Drake? It's kind of an overextension. Three, four. Let me just trade in all of these. We have three, six, eight damage, nine damage. I think I want to just sprint. Let's see what I have. Backstab's good. I can't trade in something before backstab because then it'll be damaged, so. I don't get the extra value of making a token from the backstab, but. I mean, it's pretty good. It's like the Emperor doesn't seem like something I really want to sap. I'll poke again with the dagger. We have time to read dagger. Like, shredder sap through dagger is fine. I'd rather have a shredder on the field than an Azure Drake, especially with this board, so it's more. Uh, Resilient against things like Light Bomb and Alkani Circle. Make it more annoying for my opponent. Three, six, seven, eight. No damage still. Two preps in the deck and a sprint in hand. Seven. If I sprint, I have to play a card is the big issue. Otherwise, I'm mill a card. So I think it's fine just to get a Shredder down. Probably hold the dagger at this point because I'm not gonna have very much time to redagger with the amount of cards I have in my hand that I'm playing. And my opponent's at really low health. You have been. All right. Now I just have Druid. Druid always gets a win, right? So unless we draw like total shit, we have Druid versus Priest, and then Druid versus Mage. Theoretically, if his lineup makes any sense at all, the druid is, or I mean, the mage is going to be freeze mage or some sort of control mage variant, because all of his other decks are control decks. Oh, so we should be aight. Cues again with the priest. The light shall bring victory. I must protect the. Has Drake's pretty sweet against priest, <laughs> but not sweet enough to keep. Probably we need wild growth, innervate, shredder, shade. None of these cards. <laughs> Living Roots turn one just gives his cleric something to farm, so it's probably not even worth playing. I'd rather use it for removal later on in the game. We're having an exciting round here. Should turn two hero power feels bad. Why aren't I playing ranks? Cause I'm camping. Tournament man, gotta get bliss count points. 
is not going well. Turn one, turn two, turn three. Hero power pass. What a game. Druid, best deck in the game, right? That's what people tell me. They all say, Druid's so strong. Alright, well, I, I don't want to use the coin here because I still want to be able to uh, play a 7 drop and turn earlier. I guess. Otherwise, my curve is like coin Azure Drake into do nothing into. <laughs> Do nothing and to do nothing, because that's how strong my hand is, so. Let's try and go coin as Drake into coin lore, get something going on here, and maybe have to combo clear this or whatever. Lothab's not terrible. If this was still at 8, I would go Lothab, because the turn after we could go as Drake Living Roots and clear it off, but probably not worth it right now. I don't know, this just dies on board though. This doesn't die on board. So I want to play something that doesn't just get wiped out by the board. Really? That's a big death lord. Got a lot of eggs in that basket. Probably worth silencing, honestly. Just to not have to worry about it. But well, I don't develop anything while silencing this turn. I think I'd rather bump it and just uh, either play lore or war. And I want to play... Like if war gets entombed here, it's pretty bad for me, but it's not the end of the world. So I think I'll go with the war and hope it sticks around a little bit. Entombed or death is like pretty bad, but it's not the end of the world. So, And the likelihood of it happening just increases the further the game goes on. Yeah. A piloted shredder in your deck. This guy's too strong. Well, I can kill that now. About time. So I'm gonna kill with the living roots to see what comes out before anything, and decide what the rest of my turn's gonna be. That's really bad for me. <laughs> you want these in your hand because otherwise you can run out of steam pretty easily against. Uh, Priest. I can't play Shade this turn because it's too vulnerable to like just him trading here and Holy Noving and clearing my board. So I guess we're gonna play Azure Drake. We could try and YOLO. If we go all in though and get light bombed, we're not gonna be happy. Not gonna be happy. Looks like he's Holy Noving. Alright, we got a chance to take the temple back. The damned stand ready. Yeah, he had a drop with his holy nova. This guy's curve's crazy. Double interface. Alright, we have a dream though. The the multiple damage combo, you know? So the dream here is we get force, force, roar, roar, innervate, innervate, get it all emperor discounted and go force, force, roar, roar. That would be 14 damage roar plus 12 damage from the trees. Get the 36 damage burst combo off. Alright, well, the key to this working, this needs to not get entombed. Otherwise, we're gonna have to play defensively, because we will die. I don't run Emperor. Oh, I forgot to put in Emperor. That's silly. Why am I playing Druid without Emperor? That's a terrible deck. Why wouldn't you tell me to include that? Oh, jeez. Okay, then we have to do this and try and stay alive a little bit here. Hopefully no Cabal. I mean, I gotta say well played. Well played. <laughs> when you get North Sea Craig into the face, the tournament experience. I didn't play around it really. Touch the wild. Oh, 
All right, Innervate Wild Growth. We just need anything we can play before turn three. It would be really good. There we go. Last time we didn't even have a... Um, what was our first play last time? Was it like... I guess turn four we went Wrath Living Roots to clear a minion. That's technically speaking our first play. Our first play was really low. Th good. His lineup makes no sense. He's got Tempo Mage with these decks. He's like, let's not target Druid at all, but then randomly have Tempo Mage instead of Freeze Mage. All anti-aggro decks, and then Tempo Mage. Sick. I mean, he doesn't have all the cards. This is probably just all of the decks he has, you know? So you can't really make reads on your opponent and try and, like, outthink them or outplay them when they're... Their strategy is literally just, I'm gonna play the things I have and hope they win. Well, both of these get fireballed, like Azure Drake or True to the Claw, so I would rather have some benefit out of it before it gets fireballed. And if he tries to play like minions into it, we get swipe. And this way I still have removal for uh, Flame Waker, because I can charge into it, you know? How you should be reasoning when building a tournament lineup? When you build a tournament lineup for Conquest, you should either bring the most consistent decks in the game, which would be like Druid, Control Warrior, and just Zoo. Like whatever is tier 1. You either bring all of the tier 1 decks, or you bring decks that all target the same thing that is a tier 1 deck. So you bring three decks that are good against Zoo, like Freeze Mage, Priest, Patron Warrior, or something like this. Or you bring three decks that are good against Druid, or you bring three decks that are good against um, yeah, whatever the tier 1 deck is. So you either do that, or you do holy shit, a Karen. Or you um... Or you just bring the three best decks for conquest. So this guy didn't bring the three best decks. He didn't bring the tier one decks because Priest was in his lineup and that's never tier one. And then um, didn't have, whatchamacallit, didn't have anything targeting with it, which is why it wasn't a good lineup. But I mean, it's no hold against him. He's just obviously doesn't have all the cards and he's playing with what he's got, which is fair. And he almost got me, man. He almost got me. It's just because like his things were so unpredictable, it was hard for me to play correctly. Couldn't beat Mercy Kraken, you know? Where I see this coming into play is it requires you to be ahead on board. So your opponent has no minions on board, you're dominating the board, maybe some sort of zoo deck, something like that that has really good board control. 